Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I just want to make sure that everyone's Android Studio is set up and working correctly and the best way to do this is actually build a really simple basic Android Studio project and run it and if we get um, any errors or if we come across any issues I'll show you guys how to fix them as well. So the first thing that you always do whenever you create a new project is just click start a new Android Studio project you guys probably could figure that out now I'll talk you guys through this um, real quick but again this is just an example to make sure that everything is working correctly so if I am kinda of running over everything kinda of quick or if you don't fully understand everything that I'm doing don't worry we're gonna be coming back to everything cover it in detail later on but again let me explain just real quick what's going on now this of course the application name is not only the project name so it's not only you know whenever you're browsing your computer you can identify which project you're working on but this application name is actually the name of the app whenever you put it in the Google Play Store so again for this one we can just keep the default name because this is like I said a really stupid example just to make sure everything's working we're not actually going to be selling this however when you do develop an app that you are eventually going to sell take some time and um, think of a good application name because it does matter now the company domain again yours is probably gonna be like I don't know what it was to start with probably like example.org or example.com or something but the company domain is how you identify each application now as you can see whenever you type in a domain name okay come on cursor the new boston.com Dot cinnamon all right dot com you see that the package name fills in automatically and this is called a reverse domain notation so whenever you're going to a website you would type the name followed by dot com the package name is com dot the new Boston dot the application name so again this is just an identifier to say okay there's a lot of apps named my application on the Google Play Store how do we know which one is Bucky's well that's the one with the com the new Boston so again this is just the name of your app your website and then once you fill in both those things it fills in the rest of the crap for you so ugh, got like phlegm in my throat so click next and this is actually an easy screen to understand it says okay you're developing an app for the phone and tablet this is all we're going to be doing for this tutorial series I'm not going to show you guys how to develop anything for the TV or where now where is pretty much anything that you can wear on your body like um I don't know if they have uh, uh, like glasses yet but this is like smart watches and stuff like that so again this tutorial series is just gonna cover how to make apps for the phone and tablet so select that and also I probably should mention this the minimum SDK you probably either want to put 8 or whatever the default is now this is um well you guys um, no like the different versions of Android that came out of course the later ones are the newest ones but the reason that you just don't want to go ahead and develop for the latest one is because a bunch of people still have these older versions so if you say okay well I got you know I don't know maybe you got KitKat so that's great but whenever you put your app on the Google Play Store check this out it's only gonna run on 25% of the devices so if you go all the way back to Froyo, this was a really popular SDK. Whenever you develop apps for this, then it's going to run on pretty much all devices unless someone has like an old ancient phone. Now, if you're like, okay, well with that logic and understanding, let me just go ahead back to the original API right there and uh, I should be good to go. Well, you don't want to do that either because whenever you make an app that's compatible with all these ancient operating systems is going to involve a lot more code and a lot more testing and it's going to be pretty much pointless because no one even has these anyways so again a good um, median for this is to go to API 8 at the time of this recording again this is probably gonna change as time goes on but right now I'll stick with API 8 and this makes sure that you cover pretty much every device that anyone would have and you don't have to write any useless code so let me adjust in my seat a little bit here so now our next choice is okay 
add an activity to mobile. So we probably should understand what the heck is an activity. Of course, this is like the two second tutorial, so I'm just going to explain it really simple. Ugh. Okay, probably should edit that out. You know, I'll probably just leave it in. Too lazy. <laughs> All right. So right now, just think of an activity as a screen. So if you're making an app for, I don't know, a website, the home screen would be its own activity. The about section would be another activity. So again, it's a little more complex than that. But for now, just think of an activity as a screen on your app or a view. So for this demonstration, we're just going to have blank activity. So what this is going to do is it's going to set up a template app with one screen on it. Perfect for testing. So now, of course, we need to give our activity a name. Why do we need to give our activity a name? Well, that's just because whenever you're making an app with a bunch of different screens, you obviously need a way to identify all of them because if you want to say, okay, switch to the home screen, switch to the, I don't know, my profile screen. Well, this is just how your app is going to identify each one and know what's going on. And we'll talk about the layout um, and all these different things later on. The layout is pretty much how things are positioned on the screen and all this other stuff is kind of, um, you know, that's not the point of this tutorial. We'll cover that later on. But for now, just remember that this main screen is called main activity. Simple enough and finish.